Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Jess in the Flesh. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jess. I'm a 23-year-old female who recently graduated from college. May 2020, we love a corona grad gang. And I'm here just to speak my mind, really talk about all things mental health, personal development, as well as all things creative. So this is really where I come and express my mind and tell my stories in hopes of helping other people, honestly. And I just really want other people to feel a little bit less alone. So today I'm in a new location. Um, This might be a little weird, but I am recording this from my brother's bedroom, mainly though, because he has a desk. And whenever I record in the basement, I always get interrupted my dad works at home and so his office is down there and he sometimes paces around and talks on the phone so he can be loud and then like my dog sometimes goes ape shit and runs around crazily so that's why I decided to come here instead because you know my siblings are both at school so I basically have the whole upstairs to myself most of the day so That's where I've been kind of residing in things. First, I'm going to go over my weekly recap, which is obviously when I tell you kind of what's happened this week. Ups, downs, everything in between. Just to fill you in on my life, you know, if you care. But regardless, it's nice for me to look back on, even if nobody listens to my show. And, you know, it's fine. I'm used to it. I just hope that when I'm doing this for a reason and I'm reaching someone out there who has experienced something similar to me or, you know, can relate in any way, just to feel less alone during this time, I just hope to connect with others and everything. So, so if you've been following along, I have gotten into virtual assisting like researching it I want to start a business I have slowly started to get preliminary things set up last week I said I really wasn't invested in it this week I'm still slacking on that stuff I've been focusing on other things like YouTube it was my dad's birthday my parents anniversary yesterday my dad was a smart man he made it the same day so he wouldn't forget honestly genius move might take after my father and have my wedding on my birthday so I don't forget. (laughs) Take notes. That's a good idea. And so yesterday was really low-key. We're supposed to go out to dinner, but then my dad had his playoffs for his softball league, and my dad is a very big child at heart. So, you know, we let him go and play little boy softball to make him happy on his birthday. And then we had creamsicle cake, like ice cream creamsicle cake. It was so good. It was like vanilla ice cream, but with um, creamsicle sherbet. 10 out of 10 would recommend to a friend. And in regards to like work, if you all don't know, I work in retail. And I've had my ups and downs this week with it. Recently, my hours have been reduced even more. So I'm only really working 10 hours a week and obviously I can't make a living off that. It is sad. And also I heard on the news that the specific retailer that I am working for, a ton of stores are closing down all over the country. So they're going out of business, which obviously is part of the reason why my hours are reduced, but also they didn't really give me a lot of hours to begin with. So, because of that, and also, I had a shift, and then the day of in the morning, one of the managers contacted me and was like, can you actually come in two hours later? We're over hours this week. It's like, bitch, you should have known you were over hours and not have scheduled me then and gotten my hopes up that I was getting more hours on that one shift, which is just annoying in itself. If you were to reduce my hours, at least do it like a day or two before, not day of. So I was, I was really annoyed 
And that kind of triggered me to go and seek out a, another part-time job so I can kind of supplement that. I decided to get a seasonal p- position so then it'll motivate me to find a good full-time job. And I also watched this, like, long-form podcast thing on YouTube. And I'll, I'll link it in the description for you if you're watching the YouTube version of this episode. Basically, he, they were talking about how the worst time to apply for jobs is mid-December because everyone's preparing for the holidays and they need that, like, steady income coming in. So, in all that chaos and everything, it's like the end of the year. Everyone is very, very busy with personal things and also within businesses. So, it would be the most likely scenario for your application or resume to get misplaced and you probably won't be seen as much. And then... They also said that the first or second week of January is the best time to apply for jobs because if you do that, that's like right after the holidays. So there's a lot of people who are holding out on their positions until the new year. So then they get all of those benefits and their end of the year bonus and everything before they like go deuces and leave. So that's when a lot of companies are scrambling to fill positions. So there's the most opportunity during those times. So In the next couple months, I'm kind of preparing for that while also kind of supplementing my income with another part-time job. It's funny because the second part-time job I picked up literally two days, in two days, this morning I had my phone interview. I didn't even have to go in the store, which was honestly really nice. I didn't want to leave my house. So I did it over the phone. Literally the first question she asked me was if I had another job and what my hour, my available hours were. So it was the most painless thing I've probably ever done. The most painless conversation ever. And knowing your girl, I get major anxiety when it comes to jobs and stuff. One time at college, one of my friends tried to get me a job at the rec center and I had an interview and I didn't go because I got so freaking nervous and was anxious. And I, I just couldn't go in because I was scared. So that's, that's how much fear I have when it comes to, well, what I used to have when it came to, like, looking for jobs and stuff. But as of now, my whole life I've had, like, six different jobs. Well, seven if you count <laughs> working for my mom's friend's son who had his own, like, landscaping business. I helped him mow lawns and stuff and he paid me $20 an hour which was the best pay that I've received from any (laughs) job so far. But yeah that was that was hard work that summer but I've done a lot of things. Pretty much my first job I was working at this place called Paint-A-Pot and basically I helped teach kids and families how to paint pottery. It was basically like a color me mine but it was a small business so it wasn't a chain and I really liked that job but my manager very much disrespected me and also I was living with my grandparents because that was right where my job was for that summer and it was just a very very depressing time I was super lonely so I quit that job because you know I couldn't handle the verbal abuse and just being sad and lonely the whole summer. So there was that. And then my second job, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts. I have so much respect for those people because that job literally sucked the life out of me. <laughs> Especially if you are on the morning like coffee rush and there's a drive through. I'm telling you, tough stuff. After that, I worked at a supermarket as a cashier. I actually kind of really liked that job. There wasn't too much to complain there. I mean, the management was questionable, especially after my favorite manager left. And I was going to go back there after graduation, but they changed their policy and all of the managers that I had left, so I had no attachment there anymore. So the policy change, I was... Okay, they didn't have any more, like, temporary positions. So if you didn't work within, like, a a month or a three month period I don't remember what it was they took your name out of the system like you didn't work there anymore and then after that I took that as an opportunity to 
get another job. But yeah, simultaneously as I was working at the grocery store, I was also helping that kid mow lawns. And then I got my current retail job and then this other retail job I just secured. So yeah, I've gone through interview processes and applications and stuff many of times and I haven't gotten rejected yet. So I'm very proud of myself, honestly. Look at me go. But I also haven't really applied to things I'm not qualified for because it scares me. But I think I'm going to push myself to do that more while simultaneously working on my virtual assistant business because I feel better about having like money coming in so I can really work on that on the side and take my time with it and take the care it needs instead of feeling like I have to rush things to you know, make income to supplement everything. Also, remember when I was saying, I'm gonna watch a Halloween movie every day in October? Well, I kind of, (laughs) I kind of stopped doing that. Okay, okay, hear me out. It wasn't really vibing with my mental health all that well. Like, watching a scary movie every single night kind of just made me very depressed and see a lot more negatives in the world, and that's not really good for me, so I had to, like, watch them on and off. The movies I watched last week were Scream, Scream 2, and I watched Coco with my sister, and, you know, I love Coco. has a very special place in my heart, honestly, but I never saw the Scream movies, like, the first couple, and I really vibed with them, honestly. They hit me hard, like, I don't know. I enjoyed them, but the thing is, like, about me and scary movies, I don't really scare easily, but it just makes me, they just make me depressed, so I can only take them in very small doses. Like, I like them, but they make me sad later on, so it's, like, a compounded thing. Anyway, I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna get into the show. So, today's topic is something I was really hesitant to discuss. I feel like this story that I'm going to talk about is probably the most vulnerable thing I'm ever going to talk about, or I've yet to talk about on the internet. I just am exposing myself in a way that doesn't make me look like a good person, and I'm going to unveil a lot of mistakes I made, and basically this um, episode is about how I was brainwashed and it was really scary and it was all because I was heavily invested in self-development and I got taken advantage of and recruited in an MLM so (laughs) I'm gonna talk about that after the music break because you know I felt like it was an important story to tell to put my story out there, put my hat in the ring, and kind of tell the truth about it, kind of how, like, their processes and things, so you can kind of be aware if someone reaches out to you to try to get you involved in their business opportunity, if you know what I'm saying, and yeah, we'll get into that in a minute, so on to the music, y'all. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the first musical selections of the day. Um, I really like these songs. I haven't really heard them in a while. December by Neck Deep, honestly a bop. But anyway, besides talking about the musical selections I just played, I'm gonna get into the topic of the show now. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I don't- this- this topic is so uncomfortable for me to talk about because- I don't like failing at things, and this in my life is basically one of, one of, if not my biggest setback, I feel like, but I learned so much from it, so I wanted to share this because I really just don't want anyone to make the same mistakes that I did. You know, from a common sense standpoint, looking at the situation, no common sense went into this at all. But 
I'm gonna just explain it from my perspective on how I got into an MLM and later on I'll talk about how I was brainwashed but we're just gonna highlight the key things that contributed to this moment in my life which obviously wasn't ideal you know like it just sucked (laughs) at the beginning of quarantine and when I was sent home from college early I was just very very depressed I was dealing at school with a traumatic experience that happened to me on campus don't want to go too much into detail about that because that is a little too much for the internet to handle and I'm not very comfortable about talking about that but yeah it was my most the most depressed I probably have ever been in my whole life I was just really silently suffering my thoughts were getting out of hand thankfully I didn't take any action on those thoughts because it could have ended very badly for me I had the support of my family and my friends who my true friends (laughs) ooh, just roasted some people who were fully aware of that situation and they you know were the reason why I didn't act on my thoughts (laughs) in those moments but it came to a certain point where I was just not leaving my bed, not having any motivation to do anything, and I felt like I didn't really get closure with those people on campus, like my childhood was ripped away from me because I thought I had months left of being in communication with these people, being friends with these people, and really feeling like I had a full college experience. But I have yet to have a graduation, which is kind of, I'm kind of annoyed about. But anyway, all that was taking a toll on me, but especially the traumatic situation that I went through. And it came to a point where I was on TikTok just scrolling away, being depressed in my little cocoon in my bed. And I came up across all of this content about self-development and the law of attraction and all that. So... I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to figure out really what I want and implementing practices to make those things come to fruition in my life. And I dove headfirst into it. I was meditating every day. I was really invested in all sorts of law of attraction practices, scripting and everything. I can do an entire episode all about self-development but that's not really what this is about right now so I was so far into that it really opened my mind to a lot of people a lot of opportunity and I was still vulnerable so I really wanted to start applying myself and doing things to create distractions from really fully feeling those emotions from you know, my situation and everything I was going through. And so I was just in a very vulnerable position. And so I was very prone to being taken advantage of, which I I felt like part of me was, but I let it happen because I didn't want to feel. I just wanted to be distracted so I didn't have to feel and deal with everything that was troubling me (laughs) on the inside, pretending like it wasn't a thing. And, you know, everything with self-development, the law of attraction, it's like you have to be at high vibrations to attract high vibe things. And it's like I was putting on a, a fake mask of being very happy and all that and at this time I was contacted via LinkedIn by someone who was discussing entrepreneurial things with me connecting with me on graphic design because she was a graphic designer I was thinking about doing graphic design because I have an art degree so 
that was something I was interested in. So that was a common ground that we connected on. And as I was talking to her, she presented this entrepreneurial group <laughs> to me. It was more like, it was like, yeah, she's like, I know this very, this um, amazing group of very successful entrepreneurs that I'm a part of or whatever. And she was like, I may be able to talk to my mentors for you so you could meet them and potentially get involved in this. And at that point, I was so, so vulnerable. And I was like, okay. And obviously, I didn't meet them right away. But I got on a video call with her. And she was very nice, very lovely. And we had a few meetings. And, you know, during our first meeting, she provided me with this book, which was a Robert Kiyosaki book. And basically, it was about network marketing to try to introduce that business model to me from a very credible, like, rich man source. Like, you can do the research. Robert Kiyosaki is a very well-known name in, you know, wealth and making a name for himself and entrepreneurial stuff and growing businesses and things. And in that first book, it was, like, starting to turn your mind to thinking, oh, this network marketing thing seems like a very, very good and beneficial business model. You're helping the person above you. You're also helping yourself simultaneously. But the people above you want you to succeed because it benefits them. I just feel like they don't really care about you as much as they present that. But I found that out later. When you give someone something for free, psychologically, it's kind of manipulative because studies show that if you give someone something, they feel automatically obligated to give something back in return, which was my support, my time, my energy, and everything. The few meetings in the beginning There wasn't a lot of disclosure for what this thing really was. I kind of went in blind and at the beginning you're not told all the details because they claim, oh, I I want to establish trust with you. I want to build a foundational relationship because I don't want to introduce you to my mentors if you're not, you know the mold that they need or wanted you to be. Before they told you anything, they wanted to make sure that your your thought processes aligned enough with them so they could mold you even more, I felt like. After a few meetings with this girl, she made me feel very welcome, very supported, very nice. And I eventually was invited to this virtual business plan where they discussed how the business worked, the model of the business, and it was about an hour and a half, two hours long. During that meeting, they presented all the successful people in the business to make it seem like it was very, very possible for you, even though they're like, they also try to simultaneously make you feel really special. Like, oh, only one out of 10 people who watch this presentation go through with this. And so congratulations for being here or whatever. They ma- they wanted to make you feel like you were very important as an individual. But really, I felt like in the long scheme of life, they were kind of doing that so like solely to manipulate me get me to continue to put my guard down. So the more I was attending these meetings and talking to my sponsor, the more I was getting dragged into this. 
I saw the meeting again a second time because they wanted to make sure it sunk in. Um, I, it was, they, I had a follow-up. She asked how I felt about it, my thoughts, my opinions, and everything. And once you show a significant amount of interest, they then break down the money you have to pay per month to fund your business but newsflash, you're not funding your business. All of the money that was a monthly fee was for educational material, aka material that is going to brainwash you. The material that brainwashed me, honestly, and especially in my the vulnerable state I was in. And so... They also teach you how to budget your money and move your money around enough to prioritize your business, which is really their business because their success, a lot of it depends on you because you are a part of their little network of people. And so they push all of this material onto you and it's to get you to continue to try to mold your mind into a different way of thinking. I feel like some people are meant for this way of thinking and some people really thrive in this environment. I'm I'm not saying that this whole thing was like dead awful. When I was in it though, I was I was in it like hard. So, the learning material basically had me out, like, a few hundred dollars by the time I left. Thankfully, I I left when I did, and I got my refund back. But the learning material itself, basically, they wanted you to listen to at least one audio, which was like a podcast, watch a video, and read their book that they provided to you every day. They tried to train you to get into these habits and prioritize your time to really dedicate to this because, you know, they want you to succeed so they succeed. It's all about personal gain, even though they're like, oh, you're in business for yourself, but you're not there alone. They... They had a sense of community, which is why I felt like I got sucked into it so easily because at that time, even though I had my family, I had a few friends, I just felt very disconnected from them because I was so sad that I shut people out. And I felt like this for me, I finally had like a group of people who I felt cared about me, but in reality, I feel like, well, part of me feels like it was the facade, but I can't say that for sure. I don't know if that if that's 100% true. And so, I felt like I was emotionally manipulated to try to put, like, be, I was being pushed to grow this thing and sell these products that I honestly couldn't give two shits about these overpriced products and they present you they also want you to purchase your own products obviously because if you have a business it makes sense that you'd use your own products over competitive's product and you know you get money back on your investment which I can agree with in that mindset that makes sense that's like oh, I'm going to be an affiliate with Amazon and use my own links on a different account so then I can, you know, get money back by using my link. It just makes sense. And if you don't know to do that, now you do. Congratulations. I just helped you make some money. (laughs) But ultimately, it was literally, I, I don't even know. I was just so, I was so deep into it. And... I was brainwashed into wanting to work on this all the time. I wanted to 
uh, impress my sponsor. I wanted to impress my my upline, which are the people above my sponsor. So like their sponsors and beyond, mentors, whatever. And so by doing this, I really worked myself to the bone. I became a workaholic and this was the least connected to myself I ever felt. I, 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 reflecting afterwards, I was like, that, that isn't me. But when I was in it, I was in it. I felt the happiest I ever felt in my life. But simultaneously, I was, I was addicted to working on this. I was addicted to self-development and continuing to improve myself and put myself into something that I felt like was productive and helping me get financial gain and support and encouragement from my peers within that group. And so it was like a switch. I was always a type B person. My whole life, I was always a type B person. I need time as a human being to relax and rejuvenate. I can work hard when I need to, but I definitely need to take things slow sometimes. But this was like pedal to the metal, foot on the gas. And it was just go, 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 go. And I was attending all of these virtual meetings twice a week. It would suck up at least four or five hours a week just on the meetings alone. And then the rest of the material would suck up maybe 10 to 12 hours every week. So really, it was like becoming almost like a full-time job to me. In the audios particularly, there was always presented a sense of like urgency, like the time is now, you should do this now, crack down and do everything right now because time is money and all that. Like it was kind of being enforced in that way. And they were also talking about only only listening to their audios, only watching their videos. You can't watch any TV. You can't watch, I mean, maybe not you can't, but they were heavily promoting that you reduce the time you watch TV or YouTube or any other sort of media because it's heavily laced with negative things that will affect how you are thinking. They wanted to preserve that mindset and keep you in the bubble that they were presenting to you to keep you in it. And it worked on me like a like a charm. I I immediately stopped watching YouTube, watching TV, things that I would just do normally. I would stop doing. I didn't listen to music. Instead, I listened to their audios. I I fell in a deep rabbit hole and it was, it was not, it was not good. It wasn't good. I was beginning to really just spiral into it. I was just too trusting of people who kind of just didn't have my best interest at heart. It was just really weird. So I really just didn't feel like myself. I'm gonna take a break for some music so I can get myself and my shit together. And then I'll discuss some more specific details about my experience and some things that I'm ashamed that I did because of it and how it's really... It really hurt my relationships with the important people in my life. Okay, guys. So, I'm just gonna continue with discussing my experience in an MLM. So basically I was talking about how 
I was listening to those audios, watching those videos. I got very consumed and became a workaholic and a very type A personality, even though my entire life I've always been a type B person. So it was like a switch flipped in my mind. I didn't have any interest in doing things that the material framed as being a waste of time, like TV, movies, listening to music, making art, and those were all things that made me who I was, and just being in that transformed me into a total shell of a human being, and someone who wasn't me at all. It was that at the point at a point in the process where I was being very trusting and I was like they train you to do see the end goal. So I saw myself as one of the higher people in the company in the present. It's also a law of attraction technique. But by doing that I did this I did a few things that morally do not sit well with me and went against all of my own personal beliefs and I'm really kind of ashamed of the what I'm about to tell you and you might not see me as the same person and I I really just I really just hate this I, I'm gonna expose myself anyway because I'm just gonna tell you like it is. So, it was at that point where I was told that I should be starting conversations with people on social media, reaching out to people I haven't spoken to since high school. That in itself is not in my personality at all. There was a lot of people who were taken aback by it. And I completely understand that because if someone reached out to me from high school who I didn't really associate with or speak to in a long time, I would feel weird too about it. You know what I'm saying? And so I was beginning to do that and dip my foot in to those conversations. A lot of the people I spoke to were very nice, but the ones who didn't interact with me in a very very polite way. I have no disrespect towards them because honestly, I would have reacted the same way if that happened to me months prior. Or, you know, I probably wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have even responded if I'm being honest. But anyway, when you're doing this and you're sending messages back and forth to people, your sponsor wants to make sure that you are sending messages that are worded worded correctly so you can manipulate them into <laughs> having a meeting with you almost at least that's what it felt like at the time you're trying to like dabble things in but also keep the conversation going and ask them questions and for me I'm the worst conversationalist and so I was told that before I sent any message, I had to show my sponsor the conversation that I was having with whoever, and my response would be refined, my response would be worded in a way that didn't even sound like me, but I still sent those messages and went along with it, and it felt so uncomfortable to have someone who I barely knew looking over my shoulder at messages that I was writing to a person and then their messages they were writing to me thinking they were only going to me but someone else was seeing them and that I I can't believe I even considered doing that and I literally look back on it and I am disgusted with myself and I am disgusted on how that aspect of this whole thing went down and to ease your mind, they tell you, like, oh, think about it as, like, you, you're trying to talk to this guy, and I'm, like, your friends in your friend group, and you sent me a screenshot of the chat and ask what to say next. But the thing is, I never even did that. 
So doing this even felt extremely more so very uncomfortable. And if any of those people are listening or watching this, I I apologize greatly. I I am so sorry. I feel like a scumbag, honestly, and I don't blame you if you're mad at me or anything, and really, it was something I did that went against every, every part of my being and who I was. I feel disgusted and ashamed of myself that I went through doing something like that, and never again. I was, I was just so deep And so my head was so in the clouds. I was being so manipulated that I did feel like it was wrong in the beginning. But the more I was doing it, the more comfortable it became. And that's the scary part. And I couldn't see how wrong that was when I was doing it. It had me really down on myself for a while after that because, you know, I already don't have the best self-image of myself but after this experience and reflecting on that specific aspect i'm still completely disgusted with my actions i can't even say anything else about it because i'm gonna get too emotional through that i got two people into the vetting process which means i got them into meetings with me and with her my sponsor and conversations went down and thankfully, they, they both got to the point where they saw the business presentation and dipped out. Thank God. I'm, I'm so happy that they didn't end up being as, as dumb as I was. My lack of common sense and just not thinking clearly. And, you know, I was also trying to push the products onto people. And I have never been a type to want to sell to people. I feel guilty about pushing sales on people and trying to manipulate them into buying things, but I I really didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable, but I did it anyway. I really just, all of it didn't sit well with me. So I was giving out free samples to my friends and following up asking for their support, asking for business from friends and family, and when we actually gave a presentation with all of the products and things to everyone, uh, I went through with it, and immediately after it, I was like, I hate this. I didn't want any of those people to purchase anything from me afterwards. I felt like I was manipulate them into buying products that I didn't personally believe in and that was my first wake up call really of the whole thing. And after that, I was also well right before that I was told to buy a ticket to this virtual convention which was a hundred and sixty dollars or something which was fucking ridiculous and i wasted like an entire weekend watching all these lectures and everyone in the 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 emblem group chat was like fired up and really into it and i hated i hated it obviously i did take some things away that were very beneficial to me and I realized then and there that this really wasn't for me and I wasn't excited as as excited as everyone else was about it and it didn't fire me up and it really called me out on things that I need to work on like my self-worth because it wasn't just talking about growing in the business it was also talking about the self-development side of it and you know it was not going with my beliefs. And so that was the wake up call right there. I had a bit of a a mental breakdown, especially because all throughout this entire thing, my family and I would have arguments and 
really just every single day I would have a conversation with my dad and he would share his concerns about what I was doing and I would become defensive and it really created a rift in our relationship and a rift in our family dynamic. It also created a rift between me and my friends and the people I have in my life are very important to me. And I was so far deep that I had, I didn't realize that it was tearing my relationships apart. And I was hurting the people around me because I was so invested in it. And my parents were very concerned about me because they're like, who is this person? you're happy all the time, you can't be happy all the time, you're naturally a pessimist, what's up, this is weird. And looking back on it, I feel like I was a shell of a human being. Like like I said, I think previously I said this, but I, I felt like looking back on it, I was a shell of a human being and I was the most inauthentic I ever was in my whole life. Another example of this drawing a rift between my my family and my friends and I particularly my parents my parents were trying to push me to get a job because at that point it was a few months after I came home for quarantine and I wasn't making any money and I was paying all these people money into this business that I was just drawn into because I felt like I was part of a community, even though I didn't like the products, even though the people were okay. Like, I didn't realize how out of touch I was with it, but I was such a workaholic, and it was such a great distraction for me that I really gave my everything to it, but I wasn't making money, so I was losing a lot of money, and I wasn't making any money coming in, and I was telling my parents that I want to focus on this. I want this to be my main focus. I don't want to get a job because I want this to be my job. But that is so impractical and you obviously need money coming in to fund anything. Whether it be this, which I don't recommend. It's for some people, not for me. Or any other entrepreneurial sort of thing. And eventually I talked to my my sponsor and my sponsor recommended I get a job and I immediately applied for jobs that day and that's how I got my retail job I have currently and looking back on that that was also a wake-up call how how do I I'm sorry I'm getting emotional I'm sorry I'm getting emotional how do I trust someone I knew for a month and a half over My parents who I've known my whole life. How could I get that far deep into something where that in itself wasn't a sign for me and not on my radar and I wasn't aware of that. And yeah, it was just very self-destructive and it sucked. But regardless, anyway, back to after the dumb convention. So after the convention, I really realized this isn't for me. I wasn't excited about it. I really didn't want to go. I was complaining. I was like, well, I don't want to waste my weekend. I don't want to go to this stupid thing. I still feel guilty about trying to get friends and family to buy these products I didn't give a fuck about. And, you know, it was just ridiculous. I contacted my sponsor, I talked to her, I was the one of the girls who who was in the process of doing this was still going through the process. Meanwhile, as that was happening, I told my sponsor, I, I need time off for my mental health. I don't feel like myself anymore. I explained to her that I The person that you've known is not the person who I have always been. I haven't been this optimistic person. I've always been a pessimist. I am very type B. She was very type A. 
we had a deep and long conversation. I cried because she made me feel important and I felt attached to her. Because she was the person I talked to the most on a frequent basis for months, you know? And even more than my friends, even more than my family, I was so absorbed in feeling important and valued in that community and proving myself in that community that it it ruined a lot of things in my life at that time and I I couldn't see it but regardless I told her I can't do this anymore but I agreed to help her continuing the process with my friend who was going to the meetings to potentially be a part of this and I at once both of those girls who were going through were out of there I was completely gone I told them to well I told one of them the other girl doesn't really know the details but she got out so she was fine but one of them I didn't even know if she was still in or not because there was no communication there So she was communicating with my sponsor, but I wasn't aware that she stopped the process. So I had to call and ask her, and I had to discuss this all with her. But thankfully, she she got out when she did. So after this was over, I went from 100 back to zero. Like, like probably about what I was before any of this stuff went down. I got a refund because it was within the 90-day sign-up period for, like, the products and stuff. So, I got a refund for, like, 130 bucks. I never got refunded for any of the months of the audios and learning materials. I was never refunded for that. So, I still lost from it probably, like, around $500, $600. And for me, that was significant because I wasn't working a job half the time I was there. The job that I got, the retail job, obviously, like I was saying, they weren't giving me hours. And the hours recently have only reduced. And, you know, after it was all over, I really allowed myself to process those feelings I couldn't just throw myself into work anymore and push them away and pretend they weren't real and it was ultimately a vehicle to further self-destruction but when I was in it I thought it was like helping me I did learn a lot from it I'm not gonna say being in it was hell on earth obviously I thought it was the best best thing since sliced bread when I was in it but it was like look like I said before looking back on it I'm like who was that person even my parents were concerned who like who was that person that person wasn't me my my friends felt disconnected from me too they were they were like, who is, who is this person? Pretty much everyone in my life was like that. And especially because it was like this. It was all of a sudden. I support self-development and putting yourself into something and wanting to change for the better. But changing overnight like this, like a switch, that's scary. Nothing happens when you just jump right into something if literally ran into like a brick wall and (laughs) was really really committed to it I really don't blame anyone but myself for getting involved in this situation this was all me just being too trusting and very oblivious giving my trust to the wrong people And I just really wanted to share this story because I don't want anyone else to make the same mistakes as I did. I don't want anyone else to get manipulated by people 
who use your emotions to take advantage of you in certain ways. And I also want to say about my sponsor, I don't think she was intentionally out to get me or intentionally trying to manipulate me. She was a very genuine person. She was very kind to me. And, you know, she still has a special place in my heart because she was the only person I really talked to for months on end. When none of my family or friends, at least I felt like, were there to support me in this endeavor. Because I know that they were concerned about me and they had every right to be concerned about me because they were right. She is the type of person who was right for this, and I wanted to mold myself into the type of person to be right for this, but I'm not that type of person, and I want to act in ways that align with what I believe in, and I can't just do and say things that I don't believe in anymore. After that, it was a therapeutic period for me to feel things. For me to rediscover who I am, what I stand for, my morals, my beliefs. And going through this, it really gave me a wake-up call. I'm thankful that I got out when I did. I at least got a refund. I didn't waste thousands of dollars. I wasted almost a thousand dollars, but like, I didn't waste thousands of dollars. You know, that money could have gone towards so many better things for myself. It feels like it kind of just went towards nothing but a learning experience a kick in the ass a dumb mistake I do blame myself but I forgive myself or I'm trying to forgive myself (laughs) I don't know if I fully forgive myself yet but I'm trying to forgive myself I just can't continue to negatively talk about myself because I was manipulated because I was vulnerable. And I also don't want to feel like I'm being the victim in any way. Because being the victim doesn't get you anywhere. I'm not going to blame this MLM or this company. That's why I'm not saying specifically <laughs> which one I was involved in. What I am saying is that I have a new sense of awareness and I know that making mistakes are part of life and learning from mistakes are part of life and I definitely learned from this and I want you all to learn from, in a sense, my my misstep, my misjudgment, my situation. Please be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful who you trust. Be careful when you're vulnerable. It's crazy because before this whole thing, I really wasn't trusting at all. And because of self-development and the law of attraction, I became so open and trusting very quickly and it blew up in my face. Currently, I'm trying to still get involved in self-development but also remain a little bit down to earth. My head can't always be up in the clouds because that's not reality. That's not how you should live. How they tell you to think like you're in the future and where you want to be. Feel those emotions now. Yes, that might motivate you, but you're missing out on the present. And I was... In that those moments, missing out on the present, I was sacrificing time with my family, time with my friends, pushing them away because of how invested I was in this, because I was thinking so far ahead at an unrealistic reality that I couldn't enjoy now. Please just enjoy now. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed my cover. 
Now we're going to do some closing remarks. After all of that emotion, um, I need, I need to answer some questions. That'll hopefully make me feel a little bit more optimistic because that was the most vulnerable I've ever been on the internet. So that was a lot. But I'm, I'm proud that I did it because I feel like people need to hear that story so they don't fuck up. <laughs> Question of the show! This is where I get asked a question by one of you lovely viewers. And you can either ask me a question at ask.fm backslash jessicawise31. Or you can comment below if you're on YouTube, DM me on Instagram, or better yet, go to anchor.fm slash jessintheflesh slash message where you can leave a voice message for me and be a part of the show. So really excited when y'all ask me questions. This week's question was anonymous because it was on Ask FM and it is, do you believe in horoscope compatibility? Now, your girl has some questions about horoscopes, okay? Part of me thinks there are some truth to people's, excuse me, people's astrology signs. I myself am a Leo. I know I'm a Libra and a Taurus. I don't remember which one's rising and which one's moon, but whatever. We get it. There's multiple signs, so that's really your personality. Because I don't really resonate with being a Leo as my sun sign very much. I feel, actually, I feel like a lot of the traits describe me, except for the one about confidence. I am typically not the most confident person, and I've always felt disconnected from other people, and that's kind of my vibe. (laughs) So, I think that more of my traits lie within my other signs and the rest of my chart, but regardless... I feel like it is somewhat ridiculous to make an assumption about someone if they're a certain zodiac sign because in my experience, not every single person who has a zodiac sign has the same personality traits. You know, people come from different families, so genetics can play a role in personality. Your environment, nature versus nurture, can play a role in your personality. And I feel like because of genetics and my environment, that's why I'm not, like, confident like stereotypical Leos are and all that. I do think that a lot of the traits do correlate with people, but I don't think they're 100% all the time. I think that it's probably, like, 50% accurate, 50% not. When it comes to compatibility, I guess I feel the same way. Like, 50% accurate, 50% not. So, I, I wouldn't be the person to solely ra- rely on my zodiac signs to determine whether someone is worthy of me in my hand or whatever. But I do think that there's some elements to it. I feel like it helps you understand a person a little better, I guess, upon first glance. But I feel like it's a very, like, generalized thing. I feel like in that regard, it's not obviously the best method to determine if someone's compatible with you or not. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of Jess in the Flesh. And if you want to connect with me on social media, my Instagram is Jess in the Flesh Radio. And my Twitter is at Jess in Flesh. Also, if you want to send me an audio message, you can go to this website up here if you're watching on the YouTube channel. I'll say what it is. Again, it's anchor.fm slash Jess in the Flesh slash message. And then here you can just hit the start recording now button and send me a message. Also, if you feel compelled to support the show monetarily, I don't expect this. I would be very appreciative if you wanted to support the show so I could up my quality and keep spreading my message and all that, you can hit the little support tab under the same link and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, or ten dollars a month to ensure that the show is the best quality and 
so I can upgrade and also, you know, encourage the spread of my message, I guess. But anyway, once again, thank you for being here. Stay safe and be amazing. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.